Well now I suppose a few bits and bobs on the BBC. Just typing in programmes off the telly was a thing back then. Not supposed to see if anything's wrong with me. Well, at least I can after swapping the board over with the spare one. That's what being sold as spares repair is all about. The board appearing to come with a bit of software as well, something called Scribe. And I might as well stick this in there as well for later. With everything working, flash drive as well. I think I can crack on with the main action. In a bit. Right now. Good enough. Just like, I think, this flashcard system. Thanks to the PC-based virtual disk drive manager, I can have to up to 256 floppy disks copied off the internet, playable right on this machine here. We often find keyboards not very intuitive. Certainly on this game it's preferable to the joystick. The problem with the BBC Micro Joystick is that it's non-self-centering, so I have to spend as much time thinking about moving it as well as playing the game. As well as the fact there's a sizeable dead spot in the centre as well. So it takes quite a push in either direction for anything to happen. So you don't get that deft of touch that's so often needed in a game. Not that it's done me much good now. I often played this game at school, in fact. They had a disc of it there. Although one problem with this flashcard system is although it's plugged into the Though it's plugged into the expansion drive, it nevertheless cuts off the real disk drive. So what I'm going to have to do is buy something called a zero insertion force socket, put the new microchip in there and pull the lever up and down. So I can deactivate it and have the... Oh. Then have the real ROM kick in for the disk drive normally. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe VIC-20 this. In fact, I prefer this version to the Commodore 64 version. Looks a bit better and seems more fluid as well. It all goes to show you, never can tell.
What there is, leastways in my pile, is highly frustrating due to BBC programmers insisting apparently on not having a joystick mode. Having my fingers very uncomfortably on the keyboard. I just have to move left and right, aim to fire, which is at an angle, making it all the harder, with the fire button shift being the least appropriate key. Wouldn't it be better just to thumb the space bar? See? I keep on hitting the wrong thing. And once again, just picking up the joystick, we find these games really are fluid and precise. Except for there when I lost, of course. I can't help harking on about it. I hate this lack of joystick control. And to justify that, I'll present the worst offender in just a mo. I'll do it now. But this is a good game, I can play for a while on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Barbarian 2. No, I mean, just look at this pantomime. many different key combinations just to move and attack. I'd go digitally dyslexic if I tried to keep this up for too much longer. But nonetheless... How do I turn around? Oh yes, this button. Oh, but in the meantime... I'm being slaughtered by this thing. Hang on a minute, I've got to turn around again. Right, now just to... Right. Okay. Right, so returning this for the load shop. Oh, at last. But far too late. And I've played this game on the Commodore 64. With the joystick, so I know it's okay. There are good games suited to multiple keys, given a decent pace, straightforward play, and no need to press them all at once. Like on E-Type, on the SD card selection here, a comfortable racer which never presumes too much. It's a dash more sedate than pole position, but also has that nice touch of outrun about it. Decent precision on it too. Just I need to concentrate a bit more here. And um, just one interesting thought on this joystick thing. It's amazing how the Acorn Electron games had far greater joystick provision. Even though the Electron didn't have the socket for it and the BBC does. You needed the expansion for that. No games console manufacturer would get away with doing that sort of thing nowadays. Which in retrospect makes today's stuff all the more magic. Yeah, I'm going to pause and play it properly. What 
although I can do rather well on that game, this is far more like it. Joystick compatible. It's very playable, very smooth, comparable even to the opening level of Medal of Honor Rising Sun on the PlayStation 2. For early 80s arcade games, the BBC can compete quite well. Unlike me, now I'm jabbering. And to that scribe thing. Well, all I can say is if the software came on a chip anyway, why would anybody have to supply the work disc again?